All right. Um, hello, hello, everyone, and thank you for being a part of today's Indiana Arts Homecoming. We're in our second day and our second session slot of the day. Um, we are so excited to have Anna Kitzman and John Miller with the Heartland Artist Gallery joining us today, along with Josh Pitts, um, who is with the Marshall County Correctional Facility. And um, Chrissy Miller, who is um, a gallery member and volunteer um, with this program. And today they're gonna to be talking about supporting addiction recovery through art. Um, but before we get started, um, just a couple of um, um, reminders to keep yourself muted during the presentation. Um, if you have any questions, um, please put them in the chat. Um, and um, if you'd like to rename yourself, um, please um, just hover over your image and click the three dots and then you can um, rename yourself. Um, captioning will be available. Um, you can turn those on by clicking the closed caption button at the bottom of the navigation bar. Um, in addition, yeah, if you have any questions during this session, please just reach out to me through the chat um, and I'm happy to help. Um, and yes, let's let um, our Heartland artists and co um, get started. All right. I think we have a, a good group here. Um, welcome to supporting <laughs> addiction that's recovering through art. Um, we are the Heartland Artists Gallery. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, my name is Anna Kitzmich. I am joined here by several of my colleagues um, today. And I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna um, help introduce again um, my, my colleagues. I'm gonna give uh, basically a, a little overview of the Heartland Artists Gallery and what we do here so you have an understanding of our organization. And then I'm going to pass the baton off to Josh Pitts, and then he is going to uh, pass the baton off to John Miller, and we're just going to talk about different parts of this program. Um, so to begin, um, we're going to get my slideshow going up here. We are going to use um, a set of slides to get us um, going on. Uh, let's see. So we're going to. All right, we're going to use the slideshow to kind of guide our presentation today. Um, and we'll have some images that we'll have out for our program. And then um, we do have a video for you at the end. Um, so hopefully you'll get to be able to see just exactly um, uh, you know, what we do here. So again, uh, we're calling this uh, presentation Supporting Addiction and Recovery Through Art. Um, my name is Anna Kitzman. I'm the president of the Heartland Artists Gallery, and I'm joined by John Miller right here, um, two people down. Uh, he's our president and one of the art instructors at New Life Creations, uh, which that is the name of the program um, that we're going to be talking about today. We'll talk a little bit about that history. Um, I'm also joined by Josh Pitts, who is the director of programs at Marshall County Jail, and then we also have Christy Miller. Um, who is the New Life Creations photographer and documentarian. So just to get you started and um, understand uh, who we are, uh, the Heartland Artists Gallery, um, as you can see from the slide, I like to say we're really a visual arts organization. Um, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but I did want to give you a little overview of um, our community as well. Uh, so that you understand who we serve um, and pretty much what our community um, is like. So we are in uh, Marshall County, as you can see from the trusty little image there, um, and we are located in downtown Flint. So we do have a physical gallery space, um, and that is located on Michigan Street, right in the heart of downtown. Um, basically, our county, Marshall County, um, is estimated to have about 46,000 people. Uh, Plymouth, the city of Plymouth is roughly 9,000 people. These are based on the 2020 census. 
Um, our demographics are made up of about 60% white and um, not reported, but school reported 30% Hispanic. Um, we are predominantly a manufacturing and middle income community. Um, so that just kind of gives you an idea of uh, what our community is like and the folks that we serve here. So moving on, um, about art. Um, like I said, we do have a physical gallery space, but we are really a visual arts organization. Uh, we are a 501c3, not-for-profit, all-volunteer organization. Uh, we are membership-run. We are membership staff. So from classes to curating to uh, cleaning, uh, we do it all. Um, we uh, have a working board. So all of our board members have some sort of uh, position in the gallery as well. So they may be running the classes. Uh, they may be running membership. They may be uh, uh, running marketing and advertising. Um, so our... Uh, our board is very steeped into uh, the operations of the organization. Um, aside from having a physical space, you can see it from the images down below um, that just kind of gives you a little visual idea of the different things that we do here. Uh, we have a, on the very far right is a little image of our physical gallery space, um, but we also have um, classes. Um, as you can see, we have stuff a couple of kids down there today. Um, we have uh, classes for both adults and children. Um, we, because of the pandemic, we have uh, had to obviously take a step back on that, but we're gradually reintroducing a lot of our classes. In fact, we have one going on right now. We have a stained glass class happening. Um, we also, um, in addition to our classes, we have uh, monthly exhibits. So um, two of those months consist of uh, juried regional, Exhibits. Uh, right now, currently, we are hosting our 33rd annual um, fall exhibit. So that's a regional exhibit, and that runs until the end of the month. And then in May, we have a small wonders exhibit. Uh, we also have a month-long student art exhibit during the month of March. And uh, we have an annual member exhibit in December. And then the rest of the month, the other eight months, consist of featured artists from across the state and the region. Um, aside from that, uh, if we move down, we have uh, we are also very um, involved in different community-wide events and public art. As you can see, there's a sculpture there, that second image. Um, it's a blueberry, and we have uh, a wonderful program um, that we have since taken over the last couple of years called uh, Blueberries in Marshall County. And uh, we have these uh, wonderful large fiberglass blueberry sculptures where we with different businesses across um, the county, and we work with them to paint the blueberries uh, and put them in uh, from uh, various locations throughout the area. And then um, one of our favorite events that we host is our annual arts festival. It's called Arts in the Street, and that this year took place in uh, the end of July, and will be taking place in July 30th, 2022. Um, some of the other uh, events that we have on um, are some different pop-ups. So this just this past year, we had our very first community-wide pop-up um, called the, uh, uh, basically called Home. And it was, so anyone from the community could participate in this exhibit. Um, so we're hoping to, to be doing a little bit more of that for in the next year um, and, and beyond. And then of course we have um, plenty of community partnerships. We could not do what we do without partnering with um, a number of entity, entities within our community. Um, specifically, the city of Plymouth um, has been incredibly supportive, especially in doing a lot of what we're gonna talk about today. Um, and we have, um, and we participate in all sorts of downtown events. Um, we have uh, partnerships with different philanthropic organizations like Tri Kappa, uh, and then of course we partner uh, with our global school system the community schools uh, predominantly. Um, so in getting into community partnerships, um, I would, you know, we, today we're talking about this specific community partnership um, called New Life Creations. We have partnered with the Marshall County Jail 
Um, and just a very brief history, Josh is going to talk a little bit more about it. But back in August of 2020, I was contacted by, by our pilot news reporter, Jeannie Fleury. She has uh, covered um, many of those topics, such as um, addiction and recovery, um, and our, our local jail um, very passionately. And so she contacted me with an idea uh, about getting an art program going on in the jail. Um, we wanted to talk about how we could get it off the ground, how we could get funding, um, and how, of course, we could get teachers, especially in the midst of a global pandemic. So we certainly have some challenges, but we can make it work. Um, so that was in August of 2020, and by November of 2020, we were teaching uh, weekly classes at the jail. And John is going to talk more about that in just a couple of minutes. Um, so that is basically our uh, uh, program and what we do in a nutshell. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the evolution of the program, uh, some of the uh, instructors that are involved, how it began, and where we're at almost a year later. So I think that um, I'm going to pass the baton to Josh. And he is going to talk about the jail chemical addiction program, which is the pretty much the overarching program that houses the art program that we're doing. So, All right. I'm Joshua Pitts. I'm the director of program at Marshall County Jail. Um, I was fortunate to get connected with Anna through Jamie, who she spoke about, uh, the local reporter here, who connected us when we were talking about building some more programs into the jail. We just started doing the JCAP program, which is Jail Chemical Addictions Program. Um, July of last year when they hired me to do that program. I'm a licensed clinical addiction counselor and I've worked with inmates for, uh, I guess, about 10 years now, maybe 11. Um, but yeah, again, jail chemical addictions program. So I do a lot of counseling at the jail myself, but we needed more things that, that uh, we could provide, like uh, coping skills. And also uh, a lot of the inmates I work with are beyond creative. I mean, just they can do some amazing things. And I, I watch them do amazing things on envelopes with pencils and blank pieces of paper with pencils. And then uh, it was really cool to get this art program going and see John put a paintbrush in their hand. Uh, none of them had painted before. And then when you start seeing what they're, the artwork they're putting out based on what John's teaching them, it, it blows my mind. Um, I guess what I'll tell you is uh, it doesn't just my mind, it blows their mind. They didn't think they could do it. Um, we, we do classes for females and males there at the jail. Uh, they're, they're just really doing some amazing things in it. You can see the pride they take in it and that we're building self-worth through art programs. And, you know, and, and I'd be lying if I told you I saw that coming. You know, I, I just wanted them to be able to do something, something cool, um, learn a new coping skill that they could take with them, something maybe they could teach their kids and connect with their kids with when they left. And it's, it's really turned into something bigger than that. Um, another, another piece of this is the importance of reconnecting participants within their own communities, uh, not just their community, but positive people in their community. And if you make, if you ever get a chance to meet the people through this gallery, like John and Anna, Chrissy, Jamie, uh, they're just amazing people. And it's really important for inmates to be able to connect with positive people in their community. So when they leave here, they have, you know, connections, friendships, uh, mentors, uh, things like that, so that they know they're part of something better and they're worth more than what they were when they came into jail. Hopefully that makes sense. Very good. Thank you, Josh. And we'll definitely take questions in the Q&A section if you have any more questions about the jail chemical addiction program. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, introduce again, John Miller. He is our vice president of the gallery, director of membership, teacher, uh, wears many, many hats. So um, he's going to talk about the art program um, that we are doing with the inmates. So without further ado. Hi, I'm John, John Miller. And uh, this program has been going on for just about a year now. And I've seen such amazing uh, results. I just can't wait to uh, see what, uh, what's going to go on from there. But um, let's talk about, first of all, I want to talk about a couple things about um, what my expectations are, what I hope to see um, from, from the, uh, from the uh, people I work with at the jail. Um, I wanna first of all talk about the fact that 
a lot of these people I work with, I think never really got the opportunity as children to really um, develop their creative um, uh, skills or, or, be, or being able to create as, as kids. And I think that uh, uh, myself uh, being a child was allowed to express myself uh, into the arts and, and uh, it was such a wonderful thing for me. I, I want to make sure, that, uh, so I think it's important that we kind of regress a little bit and, and let these people uh, discover a lot of this um, artistic skills that, that they just really didn't really know they had. And so um, I think that's the whole thing that's kind of important. And, and then also, I want to uh, make sure that the people uh, that I teach can take these skills and not only use them for themselves, uh, because these guys are really very talented. Some of them are very, very talented. And I know that they can use those skills to actually, you know, to actually to make money. But, but the, um, a lot of people, um, just um, it's important that they even know how to do art so they can take that skill home and use it with their kids. Most of the people I work with have children. And I think it's really, really important that they are able to um, help their children with their school projects, with their uh, just, you know, get all the crayons out on the table and have fun with their kids. I think that uh, that's such an important thing. And I think uh, by giving them this uh, artistic um, uh, teaching that they're going to be able to do that in a, a much better way. So that's definitely one uh, thing I, I want to see. And then um, also another really big thing I think is important is the fact, I know for me, when you are immersed in art and when you're immersed in doing an art activity, um, it takes you into a whole another place of it, it, it really i think for these got people it really helps them with coping when they get those uh, urges for for negative behaviors and, and i like this to be a substitute for positive things there in life instead of uh the negative and i think that in in my case i know for a fact that when you are in the process of producing art being creative it puts you in a a whole nother place. It really um, helps you to cope with uh, with things that um, that I just think it's amazing that uh, what art can do for yourself. Which brings us to the fact that um, another point is that I really want them to feel a sense of accomplishment when they create something because when you create something, it just gives you a wonderful sense. Um, of satisfaction that you create something. And when it comes to art, it's not always the finished product that even matters. So you can see behind us, we've got artwork. This is our artwork that they've created. And it's not even about the finished product. It's about the, the, the journey along the way. It's about the process of, of creating. Uh, that's, where, that's where you get the, the, your satisfaction, your mindset. And so that's some of the um, uh, main uh, points that I'm trying to uh, to get across to all the all the people that we'd see. Um, so uh, let's just talk a little bit also about the actual way we do this. So um, Chrissy and I, we arrive uh, every week at the jail. We have our suitcases in tow that we carry all of our supplies. We bring our water in. We take our water out. Everything we we need we take in there, and uh, and then um, uh, supply all the guys with everything they need. We uh, we like to give them a bottle of water every week. We like to supply them with uh, some some snacks. Um, we we've had pizza parties. <laughs> we've had uh, we had subway parties uh, where we we took in the subways. We uh, we've just had uh, we've had. Uh, birthday parties we've celebrated everybody's birthdays with, with cake and cupcakes uh and i tell you what the these um uh, these these people they really love what we do and, and they they really do but so um and then um so we usually work in acrylics but we've also taught them um, a macrame class 
And, um, but most, mostly we work with acrylics and uh, on canvas. And we usually um, are not always uh, paint um, all the same thing at one time or in uh, most recently, we have now let everyone kind of choose their subject matter themselves. And so, which brings out more of their personalities and the kind of, uh, we, we kind of get to learn a bit more about them. Uh, we most recently have started journaling. And so every uh, week we pass out their journals and, uh, and uh, they write down their feelings and their thoughts and, and what uh, they're thinking about that day. And then, then we lock them up in a suitcase for the rest of the week. And then we, the next week we, Get them out for them again. So, and uh, we we feel that's an important thing. the uh, The program is really evolving as we as we uh, are slowly uh, getting more and more people involved. Most recently, we have added a few more people to our team. Um, we have a, and uh, most recently, uh, we have a, a Nancy Schmelter has joined our team, and she. Um, uh, she is a retired public school teacher, a college instructor, and a psychotherapist of 30 years, and um, also a very talented artist. And so we're very excited for her to join the team along with uh, Chris Gardner. And they're going to be uh, helping uh, with the, uh, the women's group. Uh, so we're very excited for that to take place. And um, so um, that is okay. Um, I think uh, we'll just uh, wait for some questions and let's uh, let's go to. Yeah, we can. We're, we're going to go ahead and move on to the slideshow. Um, and you probably want to give a shout out to some of the other instructors too, I suppose. We have, we have Jim we have, Holry, who is our Mad Rame instructor. Um, he's been really involved in helping too. So I think he's on the. I think he's, he's in here. He's attending today. So. And, and, and shout out to Lindsay Van Horn. Yep, and Lindsay Van Horn as well. Is that everybody? Right now. Yeah, yeah. So we have a wonderful team, but again, it's, it's continued to evolve. Um, what we're going to move on to next is just a, a photograph graphic slideshow. Um, Christy, as we have deemed, um, it's our official new life creation photographer. Oh, you know, one of the things we didn't talk about is new life creation. Why is it called New Life Creation? Um, well, that's a good question. Um, when we first started the program, of course, we wanted to set it apart from our other programs that we have already at Hartman. And so um, we uh, went to the, uh, the at the time, we didn't have the girls' class yet. So we just had the, uh, the, the men's class. And so we just asked them, what would they like to call themselves? And after, um, so we gave them a week to think about it. And when uh, the next week, um, they overwhelmingly decided that's what they were going to call it. Uh, so new life Chris, and then uh, Chrissy started the Facebook page. Yeah, and which we have almost 800 members. I think we're maybe five or less short. So 800 members. So right. Well, let's see what Chrissy has taken for us. So let me go through the slideshow. And if you guys want to chime in on anything in particular, maybe talk a little bit about what um, everyone is seeing in these images, uh, please feel free. Otherwise, I'm just going to kind of slowly I'm monitoring my time here. So, um, as you can see, they each have their own little um, uh, board that it has their little cups of paint that are um, uh, hot glued to the board, with little lids. So that's way uh, that's how we transport the. Uh, the paint uh, to them. So each one has their own little choices of paint. These gentlemen were part of our very first class and we were kind of painting the same things at this time. Um, this Jeffrey, I believe on the left here, yeah. um, the tan, he, I think that the guys called him wheels, yeah. right? <laughs> um, he was not real confident at first and, uh, but he, 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 he started to become more confident as, as the time went on. I don't think he was with us very long, but. but uh, I think what's so amazing is, is watching each one of these um, people just progress amazingly. I've seen, I've seen so much um, 
uh, I mean, look at this image here. Look at the, check out these 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 pictures. Uh, I'm just I'm I'm just so amazed by how well they uh they they did. There's there's Jim yeah. doing the macrame. The, you know it's funny because when they first uh, we first mentioned America May, I think Josh Club said, "You know what? I don't really want to do that." You know, and then after they did it, they're like, "Whoa, we love it! Can we do it again?" You know. Exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, as you can see there in the picture, we I think that was our Easter. We had little Easter baskets that that. <laughs> well, part of that was they they really enjoyed painting. So when they found out they weren't going to paint for a week, they were like, "Oh, well, we really like it." So, but it worked out really well and they, they found something else they enjoyed. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy on the left there, Joseph, I mean, he's, uh, he's, to me, I think he's just amazingly how far he's come yeah, from. Yeah. I mean, he could not paint anything when we started. <laughs> I mean, he just like constantly says, can you fix this? Can you fix yeah. this? And oh my gosh, he just takes off by himself now. Yeah. He just created. He used to just want you to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But oh, he actually he's enjoys it now. I am just, I'm so thrilled for what, how well he's done. Tyler, we didn't have very long in the white there. No. And his background a little bit. He liked to do those like wine and canvas type classes. He said he that's what's he said he, he said he, he instructed, instructed those instructed. before. Yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. Told me. That's yeah. See, look at that happy face. <laughs> <laughs> that's what stood out to me most in some yeah. of these pictures is she just seemed smiling. I love that scene. Uh, this class brings mm -hmm. that out. And so deeply it matched mm -hmm. what they're doing. Rick always was. He didn't talk much. The one on the right with the purple flowers. He he was just really into that painting. <laughs> yeah. This was fun because every time I thought it was good enough and done, he did more and it got better and better. Yeah. This is the sheriff uh, with one of our participants who he actually purchased that painting to take home with him because he liked the dog so much. And you guys also um, did a series of pets, right? We did. We did paint your pet, and uh, oh my gosh, that was that. They all had a great time yeah. with that. They all. Uh, what happens is, uh, Chrissy, being the photographer, they'll tell Chrissy what they, you know, what like they told us what kind of pets they had, and um, so we would uh, we just would find the pictures of the pets they had, and uh, yeah, and, and Chrissy always comes up with all the. Photo, uh, all the photographs that they paint is uh, as he comes up with. And this is our, our, our women's class here. Which Jackie Kale she, used to be part of. Shout out to her. Yeah, Jackie unfortunately had moved out of state, so she, she's not able to volunteer anymore, but she helped us start the class. And Crystal on the right, painting the reddish hair. Wasn't she a bit shy in the beginning? And yeah, it really, it really brought out her personality. It did talk more. Yeah. yeah. I want to talk about the mural that the women are standing in front of. There's a better image of it at the actually let's go back. Yeah, so the, the, the blue wall back there with the, the big dove on it, um, the guys had started learning how to paint. And, you know, I came up with an idea of, hey, maybe we could paint a wall. And it's, we basically have one room at the jail that we use as a classroom. You know, we do the, all the art classes in it. We do most of the counseling classes in it. And I thought, you know, all the walls in the jail are the same tan color. So let's, let's change it up a little bit. This is a therapeutic educational room. And I, you know, I went and asked the sheriff and he was all on board with it as long as it was going to be something presentable, appropriate, and look nice. And uh, you know, I, I told the guys that they came up with an idea for it. And then we had one really good artist who had never painted before he met John, but really good artist. And he was able to hand paint this on the wall uh, based on a picture that they came up with as a group to represent the JCAP program. But also what we're doing uh, just in, in the art class in general. 
talk a little bit about yeah. this? Yeah, so this, this was another, uh, another community project. Um, we had a, we had a sewing machine at the jail that we were, you know, making masks with and things like that because of uh, the COVID issue everybody seems to be having it was having and um i think that should be a good idea to to do something a little bit more with this and i didn't really know what i was doing at the time and i kind of took on a little bit more than i realized but i went around the, the county and i got t-shirts from all the local law enforcement fire departments and schools that i could connect with and uh, brought it back to the jail and found a little free time here and there to pull the girls out of their pod and set them down in front of the sewing machine and uh, we all hung out and they they cut them to size and we turned it into a quilt. So what you're looking at is a quilt that was made from um, all, all t-shirts here in Marshall County. And it represents, if you start looking at the names, all the schools, the fire departments, the local law enforcement, and we put it up for, uh, for an auction. And I think we made $150 towards it. And why you see so much pink is because the $150 was then donated to uh, breast cancer research. And it's a community service project for that, for the participants there. But it, it gives them a chance to give back to a community, feel like they're part of something and start learning how to take pride in themselves and knowing that they can get involved in the really positive things that they want to. Well, this, this is, really a, a wonderful thing that we did uh, during our seventh annual Art in the Street, which we have every year, downtown Plymouth, uh, put on by Harlan. Uh, we took all the uh, paintings that the guys had done and the guys were so excited to do this for us. They donated their paintings. We displayed them at the Art in the Street and we asked people just donations, donate, and you will get a painting. And so um, all these paintings uh, uh, were done by uh, the uh, New Life Creations. And uh, these paintings uh, uh, were, they're, I think pretty much they were all gone. So a few couple were left. And uh, I think we, you know, and we made over $650 uh, with, for these paintings. And so, um, so this is, uh, and this is how one way how we help fund the, pro the program is by uh, the donations that we get from people who buy the paintings that, that, the, uh, that the people do. So yeah, this was a wonderful day. Josh was there um, uh, helping uh, uh, pedal the paintings. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Chris, uh, as he was there too. So we had a, that was a, that was a great, uh, a great day. It was a, a wonderful, uh, a wonderful community. The community really reached out and uh, and uh, helped. Uh, yeah. That's been a great start. <laughs> That's been great about the Facebook page too. If uh, you go through and you start looking at comments, I don't know that there's ever been anything negative that has come up. Everything has been positive, and supportive about uh, what we're doing. Uh, and you see that when we when we did this event in the streets, there uh, so many people just showed up and. Donated. Some people didn't even want a painting. They just wanted to donate because they thought it was something great that was happening. Other people, you know, wanted paintings, and it was it was just really good. It was a good event. But it's, it's good that the community can see that we're doing positive things, and and these people are worth so much more. And I like to also mention that a lot of the families of of, of the people um, uh, have have reached out and said we want those. You know, we want to donate and and take the paintings from their yeah. from their from their loved ones, you know, so yeah, the, the families themselves have been a big support as well. So, so aside from selling the paintings, we also just have receipts to raise donations. So people just wanting to help support the program uh, have sent us checks that we were receiving donations before we were even soliciting them. So we knew that the community was, uh, you know, for the most part behind this program. Um, next, we're going to move on. We've had, uh, we, I reached out when I said we were going to do this presentation. Um, I reached out to a friend um, and local artist, uh, Josh Walker, who um, is a, a witness with audio visual artwork. Um, so he put together a video for us, uh, a little interview with um, individuals who are involved in the program. So, fingers um, crossed that this works.
for the for the two hours that I'm in this program, I uh, it takes me out of the place I'm in and uh, it lets me feel normal and uh, have a peace of mind. And uh, I'm not in jail. I'm not I'm not anywhere but into my painting, and, and it's um, something that I will carry on for the rest of my life. I'm really um, really glad I got the chance to do this class. I learned more about myself than I really thought. It's a really good program. There's a strong future for a lot of us. I really respect what they do here. It's, it's a blessing that we get to do this. With art, I found a media as a way, a, a way to express myself. You know, I, these kinds of things are strengthening me as a person inside to become something better than I've ever been. It's peaceful, man. It's such a meditative kind of experience. I feel like this can offer a new way to assure a successful reintegration to society because this, this really puts people in a different kind of mindset than lifts spirits and gives people something new to focus their time and their energies into. I believe that it can help people reduce the rate of recidivism and help them to reintegrate in a positive way, give them something good to take with them, that they can carry this with them for the rest of their lives. Um, what's happening here right now is something that's needed everywhere. We need to come together and start caring about one another. And this is a real good step into that direction. And it may seem small and insignificant to others, but this is life changing stuff here. And I just think it's a beautiful thing. I hope it keeps going and I hope it spreads to more people. This has helped me in a lot of different ways because I know from doing the things that I listed just a minute ago that it's kind of like an outlet. And uh, especially being in the environment, this uh, whole jail environment that uh, you need an outlet serenity in a sense, you know. And it brings a lot to me, it helps me mentally. John and, and Jim and Chrissy are all super cool, man, and, and down to earth, and I know that there's a lot of greater good for this. I know that it would, you know, help people out. But it's a really a great program, and I think that it also gives somebody something to learn. Yeah, I hope that this, con this, this program continues to go on after I'm gone, and I hope that it would spread. I would like to see more people being able to, I'm saying, uh, utilize it. The teachers and the instructors um, and the uh, inmates, uh, we, we got a bond, um, something I want to try to carry on uh, upon my release. So I'm trying to start something for the kids in my neighborhood. We get to communicate with our uh, instructors. We got a special relationship. It's a connection between our family and our kids. I think I found a part of me that I didn't realize that it just opened up. I find something that I'm good at, actually good at. I'm thankful that I got to experience it, man. It uh, changed me, man. We don't have near the problems we've had with inmates that we had before because they want to be in these programs and they're also happier. And they're, again, feeling that self-worth. That's the biggest benefit I see. We're not putting up with a tenth of the disciplinary actions that we've had to in the past. And the art program is one of the high impact programs. You can tell the inmates really enjoy participating in that. If you want to control your jail overcrowding, if you want to try to slow the recidivism rate of your community, uh, the people in your community, you're going to have to start your programs in the jail. It would be wonderful if it could expand to other facilities and give other inmates the opportunity to participate in this program. Let's get them started. Let's start, let's start the healing process now.
for any reason you have any trouble, um, you can contact me through the uh, Heartland Artist Gallery. We do have some acknowledgments here. Um, some websites and resources for our organization, um, as well as some press if you want to read a little bit about uh, some of the coverage that's been done on the program. And then, of course, there's contact information for John, myself, and Josh. Uh, so please uh, reach out. Uh, I think I am done with this uh, slideshow. So I guess we'll open it up. Wonderful presentation. What a powerful program this is and what a, what a great model uh, for other arts organizations um, to, to maybe begin this work if they've been considering it or maybe it's a new idea to, you know, <laughs> get into. Um, wonderful. Um, yeah, we have, we have a few questions in the chat here. So I will just... See if I can find the first one here. See, our first question is from Cynthia. Um, she says that you mentioned that the art can be a source of income for inmates. Do they accept commissioned work? Uh, okay, well, no, it's not a source of income for the inmates. Uh, the income goes to Heartland Artist Gallery, which we use the money to to supply with more product, you know, more uh, supplies Material. and materials for the for the inmates. Uh, they we do they do take commissions. A lot of people ask, you know, they send us to their pets and pictures of things, and the guys have painted it for them. And but then the money, which uh, we do not ask for, we do not ever ask for money. They tell us, I mean, they it's all donation what they want to give us, and it all goes to the Heartland Artist uh, Organizations. I'd like to piggyback on that a little bit. I do think that John did mention that, you know, when, when he was going through some of those therapeutic goals uh, at the beat, when he was talking about the program, he did mention that it could be a source of income for them once they're once, integrated. Once uh, you know, becoming a member of the Harmonized Gallery, creating artwork on their own, you know, pursuing that. Some of them are so talented uh, that they do have, certainly have that, uh, that ability to, to create you know, a, an actual uh, job out of their, uh, out of their artwork. Exactly. That's great. Okay, um, Lynn has a question. Um, um, how do you get to be allowed to be a collaborating partner with this facility? Um, and I would, I would have maybe a broader question for other uh, maybe art galleries or organizations looking to do this work. Um, you know, um, um, you know, I, I know very little about correctional facilities. Um, and do they all have program, you know, managers? Are they all looking for this kind of, you know, programming to come in to the facility? Um, I think that uh, just in general, correctional facilities, especially throughout the state of Indiana, are moving in a direction of where uh, people are understanding that programming, counseling, things like that are important if you really want to reduce recidivism, but also help people heal uh, so that they, they don't constantly go to jail. They're not constantly creating problems within your community, and they're starting to become parents and employees and things like that again, and they're becoming productive members of society. So I guess... Um, my understanding as the director of the program is just that this is something that's kind of building within the state. Um, as far as ours specifically, I fortunate and fortunate enough to have a sheriff that was open to the idea of doing something like this, you know. And so, and then having connections with you know a friend of mine, Jamie, and she got me connected with Anna. And then once I talked to Anna, and it was something that we could definitely do talk to the sheriff again to make sure he was okay with it. And he was like, well, yeah, let me know what it's going to look like. We'll go from there. And then we just kind of built it from there. So, but uh, having a sheriff that was open to the idea was a huge part of that. I do believe that the jail chemical addiction program was a grant um, that was awarded through the Indiana Attorney General. Um, and so I think that it's uh, folks were interested in that. There, I, I read an article not too long ago about um, a statewide program. So there are other communities um, throughout the state who do have this uh, what, JCAP uh, programming. So they can Google that, um, look that up. There are quite a few articles that were written. I can't remember how 
how long ago that was? It's through the, the initial, yeah, the initial grant was through the Attorney General's office. Yeah, so, but if they just Google uh, in Indiana, if they Google uh, jail addiction programs uh, and the Attorney General, you'll find a lot of information. And that's where we got our initial grant to start a jail, a jail chemical addictions program last year. That's great information. Um, and are there, um, I guess, just kind of piggybacking off of that, are there any considerations um, just for arts organizations going, going into correctional facilities and what they might need to prepare, um, just what, what to expect, um, just maybe, you know, general logistics or protocol well, for, for uh, correctional facilities? Yeah, I've worked at four different correctional facilities so far between Ohio and Indiana. And um, there's there's some common themes to all of them, but each one is different as far as rules, regulations, things like that. So it would really come down to talking to, uh, you know, the people in charge of the jail, fleet, their sheriff, their nanny, he's always going to be the top guy in charge of their jail. And every facility is going to have rules and regulations that are specific specific to that facility as far as safety and security measures go. Ultimately, your presence in all of the classes, right? right? So Josh is with whoever the teacher is. So there's, you know, he's always involved. So the teachers are never there by themselves. And then, you know, like John was explaining earlier, everything is, because um, that was a big concern of ours too. You know, we, we definitely had to have that conversation before we signed on. Um, but the, uh, you know, John has, they, they've got it down to a science. They know exactly, you know, the materials that they're taking in. So everything is, uh, there's pretty pretty good strict protocol that they still abide by, but yeah. And participants are picked based on behavior. I mean, they're, they're well-behaved inmates prior to becoming participants of the art program. Uh, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Yeah, and the um, was it the sheriff that was in the video? Yes. Uh, yeah, he 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 was he's a great advocate uh, to have just for maybe a soundbite. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, I thought it was so interesting. Him, you know, it's like we're seeing the benefit to the you know the um, the inmates and just you know in their own personal life, but we're also seeing a benefit to the facility. And, you know, I feel like that would be important for maybe other facilities thinking about getting into this work. <laughs> yeah, definitely we can act as a model. Doesn't seem to be a lot of uh, necessarily objective data to support what we're doing right now, but certainly there's some good anecdotal information and having the sheriff be the voice for that, data, I think is, um, is probably one of the most important um, you know, things that can come out of this, especially if other, you know, if, if anyone else is considering wanting to do a program like this, you know, they can say, hey, you, know, you could reach out to Sheriff Hassel out of, you know, Marshall County and, uh, you know, really make those connections and, and get, actually get the data from, from him. Yeah, and that data is so important. Um, um, let's see, um, so let's, um, here's a, um, Here's a fun question from Cynthia. Do the inmates get to keep their artwork? The artwork, um, it's, it, uh, you know, they, they can keep their artwork, but most likely either a family member wants it. And uh, most of the time the inmates want to donate it because they are so excited and happy to be in the program, they want to continue. So they know that by letting the, the, the painting being, being sold uh, will generate income for the, for the program. So. Uh, I, it, yes, they they can keep it. They can donate it. Uh, they, the family members can 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 take it and donate as well. Yeah, I should touch on that too. With uh, with keeping it, that doesn't mean they get to take it back to their cell with them. Um, we can we can put it in their property, so when they leave the facility, they can have it. Um, which a lot of times they'll just uh, have a family member come and get it from me because they really want it at their house or their making it for a family member anyways but the really cool part is we found out really quickly when people became interested in getting the artwork is that they take a lot of pride in somebody wanting a piece of art that they made and i think that's really cool yeah it is um and um 
I have another question here from Erin, um, and I think you guys touched on this uh, maybe, um, but um, when we have done projects with the correction facilities, we have always had trouble with the types of materials we are allowed to bring into the facility. Do you run into that and do you have any workarounds? I think based on you know our facility, they they really let me kind of handle that part of it. And so I, you know, I'm talking to Chrissy and John who come into the facility to do this. Uh, right away, it was, hey, whatever comes into the facility leaves the facility with you. We can't let them take it back to the, the pods where they they have to live at this time. Um, and, and so far, that hasn't been a problem. And I talked to the inmates too, just about how it's really important for them to follow those type of rules. Don't try to take anything back because that would mess up the program for everybody. And none of them have tried to mess that up. You know, they really look forward to this. And um, and we have jailers too that uh, if we if we need to, they can search an inmate. We haven't had that problem yet though. And then uh, we have a question from Julia. Um, and I think you might've talked about this, but um, can artists have their paintings in cells and would it be possible if painted on paint boards? Uh, can, yes, well, we just discussed that. Yes, the artists can, they can, they can have the paint, but just not in their possession. They are, they're not allowed to have the paintings in their, in their cell. They can have it in their personal property. Most likely the family will come pick it up and yes, we you, uh, in our program we can paint on whatever we decide to paint on. Yeah. That's great. Um, and I guess um, I don't think I see any other questions in the chat, um, but um, it looks like um, Mary needs contact information again. She couldn't write quickly enough, but um, I believe that we'll be sending out your, your um, presentation and some follow-up emails um, from the Arts Commission. So, um, and she can always go to our website. It's heartlandartgallery.com. All right, heartlandartgallery.com. Look them up, check them out, see what's going on. Um, that's great. Um, and then Lynn asks, um, did you say how many inmates were, were taking these classes uh, now? At the present time, we have uh, seven inmates uh, in the men's class, and at least seven in the women's, six, no, no. six in the women's class. Anyway. And uh, of course, um, the, our, 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 our students, they rotate because of course, they don't stay in the jail forever. So um, when we, use, we, we fill the gap with another person that wants to be in the program. And there's a lot that want to be in the program now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Um, looks like a great, you know, camaraderie and, uh, you know, just time to have to themselves and um, like one of, you know, someone in the video said, you know, I don't have to think about being in jail. I can just be in my picture. And, you know, that's, that's, that's wonderful. Um, now, when, when, um, when inmates are released, do you, does the gallery um, continue a relationship um, with the inmates? We haven't, I got to that point yet. Right. So yeah. I think you guys would be open to it. Absolutely. Uh, they, part of connecting inmates to good people in the community is so that they feel like they're part of the community because none of them are doing life sentences in our jail. You know, they're going to come back out to the community. And if they come back out to the community and they have positive connections, they can get involved in positive things like the artist. Industry. You know, they're less likely to go back to an old lifestyle that might have brought them to the jail in the first place. You know, so that I would love to see, you know, one of the guys walk through the door at some point here. And, you know, they're living a good life and they want to just be connected with the gallery now that they're no longer in the jail. And, and I think I we'll think see it's that. Gonna happen. It's Absolutely. Gonna, it's yeah. going to happen. I know it's going to happen. Yeah, they, they talk about it. There's yeah. a couple that are talking about it a lot. Yeah. I think something to remember, too, is, you know, we're, we're, we're only a year into this art program at the jail. So it's going to take a little while to see some of these things evolve. And then um, Julia, did that answer your question? <laughs> I think Julia had a question. Do you have a follow-up program on the outside? 
Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, food for thought there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that between that and trying to, to establish uh, some sort of objective data collection are probably in the, the near future so that we can really measure, truly measure the impact that this program is having. Um, but then, of course, try to figure out a way to, yeah, definitely a, a follow up program for sure. Yeah, that seems like, you know, logical next step of a new program. I mean, clearly there's a great deal of interest um, here in these, you know, this, this small group we have here. Um, and, you know, I haven't even, I haven't thought about it that much and I'm, I'm, I'm all in. I mean, <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting to get emotional today. So thanks for that. <laughs> so, um, We've watched the video like probably 50 times, maybe cried 48 of them. So <laughs> it's good. It's good stuff. Um, um, Lynn asks, um, do you know how you will act? access the outcomes in the future or assess, sorry, assess the outcomes in the future? I think from my standpoint, uh, assessing them statistically, we'll just be looking at whether or not, whether or not the guys that leave that were in this program come back to the jail because they committed, you know, more crimes or they went back to the old lifestyles. Um, that's going to take time to just kind of see how that plays out. Um, a lot of the people in our jail are not since yet, they're pretrial inmates. So so we don't know what the outcome of that is. Some of them have to go serve a prison sentence. Someone may be going home on probation or a, or a house arrest type situation. We just don't know what that part of it looks like all the time. And so it's just going to take a little while to see how that how that looks. Yeah. And probably the next step too is, you know, once we kind of get that, you know, cross that year mark um, to sit down as a group and kind of establish those metrics. Um, decide exactly how it want to measure this program. Yeah, great, great next steps. Um, great program. Thank you so much for um, sharing your experience um, from um, all sides of, um, from the, from the, um, from the facilities viewpoint, the inmates viewpoint, and the this art organization viewpoint, I think this is this is a great beginning, and um, hopefully, you know, people who are inspired to, you know, start this work um, will get to, you know, ha have some resources now and some ideas. So, um, so thank you so much. Um, if we if we don't have any further questions, um, I want to thank um, Anna. John, Josh, and Chrissy for sharing um, sharing this great program with us, um, sharing the inmate um, stories, um, sharing the facility stories. Um, thank you so much, and please check check out the the um, the um, Heartland Artist Gallery website um, to get further information on what's going on. Um, and um, with that, thank you so much, and please continue on into the Indiana Arts Homecoming. We have. One more session today. We have a creative intermission if you'd like to um, get involved with that directly following this session. So um, again, thanks so much from all of us at the IAC to everyone out there for joining today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. thanks.